welcome to NBA Now by Chat Sports, all things Lakers. I'm Hannah Kulik, aka Laker Hand, and today we are going to be answering some of your questions. We asked you guys to send us your questions on the Chat Sports YouTube channel. Really quickly, if you are not subscribed, make sure you are subscribe down below because it is going to be an extremely exciting off season for the Los Angeles Lakers and I want to make sure that you guys don't miss a single second of it. I also tweeted out for you guys to send me some questions as well and you guys sent me some amazing questions so thank you guys so much. Let's get right into it so I can try to answer as many questions as possible. Obviously there is a lot going on right now in Lakerland. We are fresh off the NBA lottery where the Lakers defied all odds and ended up with the fourth overall overall pick in the NBA draft whether or not they are going to keep that pick or if they are going to trade it for a future star we never know but all I do know is that there is a lot to talk about in Lakerland okay kicking off this mailbag episode we have a question from Isaac Martinez he asks why did the Lakers still dominate headlines after being such a dumpster fire the last few years well we are the Los Angeles Lakers we have 16 NBA titles we have most of the best basketball players to ever play the game. We have jerseys hanging in the rafters of Hall of Fame players. And even like you said, how we've been such a disaster these last few years, I feel like that even makes the media pay more attention to us because people love to hate on us as well. I think we are just a historic franchise. We've, you know, had so much success. And regardless, you know, we're in Hollywood, we have the glitz, we have the glamour. Everyone, regardless of what players say, want to play for the Lakers. People from all over the world are supporting the Lakers. No former Laker players watch Laker games. It's truly amazing. The Lakers franchise is something that is just truly spectacular when you think about it. So regardless of whether or not we are playing well, we have a winning record, people are still going to support us and they are definitely still going to be talking about us. That's for sure. Next question is from Ernie. He asks, do the Lakers need a president of basketball operations? You know, that's an interesting question. I think, um, you know, Rob Palenka right now is kind of assumed that role for us. Um, Rob Palenka and then obviously Kurt Rambis is having a little bit of input as well. And I think, you know, obviously Magic Johnson had the title of head of basketball operations. But I think if we're really being honest, I think Rob Palenka was actually the one really doing the work. And Magic Johnson was more of the face of the basketball head of basketball operations so I think right now we kind of do in Rob Palenka um whether or not that's the best bet for us long term is remain to be seen but that looks like that's just going to be who the Lakers are kind of rolling with um for the near future at least um obviously you never know we could hire someone tomorrow although I don't really think we are I think we're just going to be riding with Rob Palenka for a little bit and I think you know that's just honestly who has really truly been the head of basketball operations the last couple of years anyway. Magic Johnson was just more of the face of it. Now before I answer some more of your questions, I want to take a quick second to remind you all to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I think this is going to be the most exciting offseason in Laker history and I want to make sure that you don't miss a single second of it so you can follow me on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kula to stay up to date on all things Lakers this summer. And if you were also looking to maybe get in shape this summer, you can follow me on Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik. I love posting a lot of workout videos and fitness tips on there as well. But let's get into some more of these questions. Josh Baroni and he asks, your thoughts on Linda Rambis having so much power within the Lakers organization. Okay, now this is something that I actually do want to talk about for a second because I think this is just another perfect example of something that the media is just blowing completely out of proportion. Linda Rambis has been working with the Lakers for many years now. She's been a very close friend of Jeannie Buss now for many years. And the fact of the matter is, is after Magic Johnson just randomly decided to step down of head of basketball operations for the Lakers and pretty much kind of part of my friends but screwed Jeannie Buss over like that, you know, Magic was someone that Jeannie really trusted and considered to have a really close relationship with. So when he just completely blindsided her like that, it would make sense for her to want to keep her circle 
small and want to just lean on people that she thinks she can trust. However, with that being said, it doesn't mean that Linda Rambis is now making all of basketball decisions for the Lakers. Any rumor and any media outlet that is saying that is truly just trying to stir up controversy because yes, I'm sure Jeannie consults her on certain things, but she's not the one making all of the decisions. So that is just completely a rumor. It's completely ridiculous and it's completely false. This next question is actually kind of funny. It is from Jonathan Odom. He asked, should LA trade LeBron for Ben Simmons? No, definitely not. There are actually um, a few questions just asking if the Lakers should trade LeBron, and that's something that people ask me actually a lot. Um, I see that on my Twitter a lot, on my Instagram a lot. People are constantly saying, should the Lakers trade LeBron? Do you think LeBron's gonna be traded? And the answer to that is, Absolutely not. You guys, LeBron is here to stay. He is the one player on our roster who is 100% going to be on the team next year. He's the only untouchable player. The only reason the Lakers would ever trade LeBron James is if he came to them and said, I want to be traded. If he demanded a trade, then they would trade him. But LeBron James is most likely going to be a Laker for the rest of his career. But I'm curious, would you guys like to trade LeBron James for Ben Simmons? Type Y for yes or N for no down below because I'm curious to what you guys have to say. A lot of people do want the Lakers to trade LeBron, which I find pretty interesting. I don't know why you would want to trade the best player in the world, but you know what? To each their own. Okay, this next question is from Jose the Great 22 and he asks, "Do you think LeBron has as much power as people says he has?" Okay, so obviously LeBron James has some power, some say in things that happen regarding the Lakers because he is their best player. He is their star player. He's probably the best player to ever play basketball, so they want to make sure that he is happy. However, every star on every team has power because every team wants to keep their star player happy. That's just how it goes. Now, yes, LeBron does have power, but he is also not making the final decisions regarding the Lakers and regarding the franchise. Again, that's just media kind of blowing things out of proportion. I'm sure he definitely has a pretty big say, but he doesn't have any more say, you know, as Steph Curry would have, as Kobe had with the Lakers. It's just the same thing. Every star player has power with their team because that franchise just wants to keep them happy so that they stay. And especially a guy like LeBron James, again, being definitely the best player in basketball today, probably the best to ever play. Of course, he's going to have power, which he should. He deserves it, and the Lakers want to make sure he stays happy. So, yes, he has power, but I don't think he has like as much power as people say he does. He's definitely not making the final decisions regarding everything. This next question is actually a very interesting one. It is from Logan Irby, and he asks, has Lonzo lived up to the hype of being the number two pick in the NBA draft? I'm going to say no, and a big reason to that is because he is yet to be able to be healthy. For his two seasons that he's played, they've just been plagued by injury after injury, and the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how talented you are, how skilled you are, if you're the best player in the world, if you cannot stay healthy for at least the majority of the season, it doesn't truly mean anything. And I haven't been able to see as much from Zoe as I would have liked because he has been suffering from all these injuries. So he has yet to really have a long, consistent time where he is playing fully healthy. Now, also another thing that I do want to point out is we have obviously seen flashes when he has been on the court of how good he can be, but something that he really does need to work on that there is really truly just no excuse for is his free throw shooting. He's shooting 50% from the free throw line and that is just inexcusable. There's no excuse for that. It's honestly just disgusting. So if he is going to even come close to the player that he was advertised to be when the Lakers drafted him two years ago, he is going to have to A, be able to stay healthy, which is obviously out of his control, so we just have to pray that that happens, and B, work on his free throw shooting because that is something that is completely inexcusable. But again, it all does just start with him being able to stay healthy through an entire season so he gets more consistent playing time and he's really able to showcase what he can do. Finishing off this mailbag Q&A, we have a question from Dwayne Porter. He asks, what free agent would you like the Lakers to add? Okay, if I could just wave my magic wand, I would obviously say KD. He's probably the second best player in the league right now. Then I would say Kawhi Leonard, maybe Kyrie Irving. However, I don't think it's really realistic to assume that the Lakers are going to be able to sign those three players. 
But the player that I think they do have the most chance of signing and a player who I would still be extremely excited about is Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler would be a great addition to the Lakers. He's a shooting guard, which is a position that the Lakers desperately need to fill. He's a great shooter. He's a very talented player. He's honestly maybe not as quite as good as KD is, as Kawhi Leonard, but he is just a little step below them, and he's just as good, probably even better than Paul George, and he has a better personality than Paul George. He's got a pop in YouTube channel, so he's way better than Paul George anyway, and he would be a great addition to the Lakers. So that is who I think is the most realistic. Again, if I could just wave my magic wand and have whoever, it would probably be KD or Kawhi. But I'm curious, who is the top free agent that you would like the Lakers to sign this summer? If you had a magic wand, any of them, or if you're just being realistic, who do you think the Lakers have the best chance of signing this summer? Let me know down in the comments below. That is going to be it for today's mailbag Q&A. Thank you guys so much for sending me in your questions. I really loved answering them all. Comment down below if you have any more questions, and maybe we will do another one of these mailbag Q&A soon because I really love doing them. Thank you so much again for watching and until next time, Laker Hand is out. Bye guys!